The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in Good the morning and welcome to the Patagonia or Southern Patagonia webinar for Contours Travel. My name's Rod. I'm one of the senior consultants, um, Latin American consultants at Contours Travel, and I'm going to be covering a, a 15 minute talk this morning on Southern Patagonia. Just so that I know that you can hear, if someone could just type in a, a yes so that I, I know that I can be heard. Um, loud and clear as such before I commence. Okay, wonderful. Now, I'll move straight ahead. Um, the area that I'll be speaking about um, this morning will be in the Chilean side. Now, Patagonia encompasses the area or the southern cone of South America. Okay, that area of Patagonia is divided between Chile and Argentina, south of the Rio Colorado. So as I go over the, to the next map, I'll point that out to you. Okay, and um, as it mentions in the information, the best time of year to visit is ideally between October and April, the high seasons being December, January, February, and that is tied in with the weather and the duration of the days. So because it is so far south in the summer months, December, January, February, um, the days can be getting dark at 11 o'clock at night and getting daylight around five o'clock in the morning. So you've got beautiful long days, the opposite in winter where you're struggling with eight hours of daylight and the temperatures are at their warmest um, in those summer months also. Okay, moving on, you can see a, a map here of South America. So I mentioned about Patagonia and basically it encompasses the, the, area, the area to the south of the continent with Argentina and Chile. So the area that I'll be focusing on today will be around this area, number three, Torres del Pano National Park, Punta Puerto Natales and Punta Arenas. Next week um, on the webinar, next Friday at 11 o'clock, I'll be speaking about El Chalten and El Calafate and the area around there. So today it will be predominantly in this area, speaking about Torres del Pano National Park and the different activities that can be undertaken in the area around there. Okay, just moving, you can see um, the, the map here a little bit better. Now to get to Southern Patagonia, there's various different methods, which is flying from Santiago in the capital of Chile, there's a land operated, land airlines operated flight coming down to Punta Arenas or you can also travel, there is a direct flight from Puerto Montt. Now starting, uh, which has only come in in the last couple of days, in the summer months, December to February, there's actually going to be twice weekly, weekly LATAM Airlines flights into Puerto Natales which serves as the gateway for Torres del Pane. Okay. To get in, um, also Southern Patagonia can tie in very well with other destinations in Argentina. So there is a land border crossing um, just here, taking you from Puerto Natales um, that can link up to El Calafate and El Chalten, or there is the Australis cruise operating between Punta Arenas, travelling through the Archipelago, the fjords, and around to Ushuaia. So you can tie in coming in one way and out the other way um, and then travel onwards or vice versa. Also Punta Arenas um, is the only point in which you can fly across to the Falkland Islands from and also that serves as the starting point for a range of Galap uh, for Antarctic trips um, out of Punta Arenas. So from Punta Arenas um, several trips fly down to Antarctica um, and or start in Punta Arenas and finish in Ushuaia. Okay, moving along, um, as I mentioned, one of the entry points, Punta Arenas. So if you're, if you're starting an itinerary in Chile, you can easily fly down to Punta Arenas and with the flight times, you can either choose to spend the night there before travelling on or you can, um, you can sometimes fly in and a lot of the programs within Torres del Pane include transfers from the airport directly into Torres del Pane National Park. You can see 
It's a long way from anywhere, Beijing, Seoul, all the different signs they're representing. And that's a, it's a little bit of a last bastion, really. Um, one of the last places to be settled, southern Patagonia. And it was opened up by a lot of um, sheep farmers. And it's a very multicultural city with a lot of Europeans coming from um, the old Yugoslav states, from England, from Scotland, and a lot of the sheep farming that took place around that area. Um, a beautiful place to visit with some highlights um, around there, um, including the penguin colonies and the local haciendas or large sheep farms. Okay, And also, as I mentioned, um, the starting point for the Australis cruise or finishing point and the um, point where many people fly into to visit Torres del Parme National Park. The National Park is probably one of the highlights to um, southern Patagonia. It's an area that I've been fortunate enough in my time of leading tours um, and also independent travel. I've managed to have 20 or over 20 different visits to the National Park. What we're looking at here is we're looking across um, from close by to the Hotel Explorer, looking towards what is known as the Taurus Massive. You can see um, these peaks here, which are known as the Horns of Pain, and just behind you can see the top peaks of what's known as the Torres del Paine. So this is the Torres Massive and, and forms the centrepiece of the National Park. Um, beautiful from all angles, and what we're looking at here is looking over the glacial lake um, towards the, the Torres del Paine, or the Towers of Pain as such. The Towers of Pain being in the walk that you've got to do to get there. The walk um, from Hotel Los Torres, the starting point, is around about a seven to eight hour return round trip. And the last sort of 30 to 40 minutes of it is a little bit of a scramble up the moraine to get to um, this point where you can look over the glacial lake towards the Torres del Pane. Within the National Park, um, there's a variety of different hikes and walks that you can do. The majority of people like to spend um, anywhere between three and five nights within the National Park. Probably four to five is the ideal time frame, which enables you to undertake um, various different hikes within the National Park. And they can be varied from difficult to easier. And with that, um, Probably the most famous hike within Patagonia is what they call the W hike. So if you can see the green line here, following the, the lines, this is the, the Torres del Parne walk, moving down, hiking along the bottom of, or top of Lago Nordenskold, and then up to the Francis Valley, and then back, and then up to the Grey Glacier. So that walk there takes generally four days to do. Now, you can see on the side of this page a seven-day W trek, which involves your transportation in, um, in and out, and that's a little program that we can operate, or we can offer a variety of different programs staying in the hotels around the National Park. Hotel Los Torres here. Um, down here, you've got the um, Explorer Hotel. Um, you've got the Tierra Hotel outside. You've got the... Hotel Rio Serrano, which I'll feature slides for in a moment. So within the National Park, you can do all of these as day hikes. You can do the Torres del Parne walk as a, a one-day trip. You can take the ferry that runs across the bottom of La or top of Lago Pewe to this point where you can do either the Francis Valley or the Grey Glacier as a day walk. All of those walks are... Um, Moderately difficult, but for anyone with a, a reasonable level of fitness, they can certainly deal with it. It's not through so much the climbing, but it's also the, the weather conditions with the, the strong winds and the cold weather that can make them a little bit more difficult. These walks are not at altitude. For people who wish to do a little bit less strenuous walks, there are walks just off the top of the map. Um, there's a, a lagoon up there, Laguna Blue, Blue Lagoon. You can do walks around there. You can do the Green Lagoon. You can do hikes around there. You can um, also do a boat trip from the bottom of Lake Grey all the way up and to Grey Glacier. 
Not only is there hiking opportunities, the boat as I mentioned, and for people who have an interest in horse riding, but some of the best horse riding, the quality of the horses and the tracks that are available, um, make it a wonderful destination and a place to explore from horseback. Um, they do provide helmets and um, insurance for riders whilst you're in the park. Okay, for accommodation, there's a variety of accommodation um, ranging from um, the Hotel Tierra, where it's uh, built in such a way so as to try and blend in with the natural environment, so I can hardly be seen above the horizon there. When you're looking from the back of the hotel at night towards the Taurus Massive there, you can hardly see it above the horizon. All constructed using local timber and materials, very open air, very warm environment inside. And this is one of um, several of the hotels that offer all-inclusive type packages with your transfer excursions from the menu. Another one of the hotels, as I mentioned, featured in the south of the park is the Hotel Rio Serrano with beautiful views looking. So this is the front of the hotel, back of the hotel. So the front of the hotel has this spectacular view looking towards the Torres Massive. The Rio Serrano is around a, a four-star category. The previously featured Hotel Tierra, a five-star property, five-star um, countryside property, and then we have the four-star Hotel Los Torres. Now, as Hotel Los Torres is also the starting point for the walk to the Torres del Pane, along where the point is going. Um, so the location of that is absolutely incredible and you can step out the door and you're hiking or you can just uh, not jump on a horse but organise horse riding activities with the local gauchos there. The Hotel Explorer with its incredible location, um, once again looking towards the Taurus Massive and also the little waterfall that's just off the edge of the screen there. That's a five star property um, with minimum four night stays um, including your transfers excursions and they have their own boat so that they can transport you across Lake Pewe to start the various excursions to Grey Glacier or the Francis Valley. Um, for people who are wishing to do more of a, a hike, there is the Eco Camp Patagonia and that was the company offering the W Trek where you come, you stay in the domes that they have. They have sweet domes and they have standard domes and then they offer programs where you can undertake the uh, seven day W trek with a few days along the way in local refuges. Okay, There's a variety of activities with the glaciers as this area forms part of the southern ice fields and you can see some of the wildlife that's featured there. The Wanakos which is part of the um, llama family, llamas, alpacas, vicuñas and um, Wanako is featured there and also the local rears and mountain biking, horse riding, kayaking, glacier trips, hiking, Australis cruises, the marble caves, there's certainly plenty for everyone in Patagonia. Uh, Patagonia in general is about the nature, it's not about cities, um, it's about the forest, the fresh air um, with no cities and crowds. So um, we can see one of the, the crews or the little boats that go up to the Grey Glacier there. There's nothing nice than a little whiskey with a bit of glacier ice whilst you're doing that cruise. Okay, moving outside the National Park, Puerto Natales is about an hour and a half outside the National Park. This is a little town where the flights are coming in and out of now um, and transporting into the National Park. From Punta Arenas to the National Park is about five hours incidentally. Okay, one of the best properties is the Hotel Singular, a five-star hotel which has been built in an old converted frigorifico or um, frozen lamb processing plant. Um, the hotel itself is incredible and offers packages as well from two, three, four nights with all of the inclusions as well. Okay, fantastic. I can't speak highly enough of that property. Okay, um, not only do we have five-star properties, we have um, from three and four-star properties also located in Puerto Natales with the Wesca, the Martin Gacindi, and then also operating from Puerto Natales is the Scorpios 3 cruise, which visits to several of the fjords and glaciers of the area. That's a three-night cruise starting and finishing during the summer months in Puerto Natales. 
The last cruise that I'll talk about today is the Australis cruise on the Stellar Australis, which operates on a weekly basis between Punta Arenas and Ushuaia via Cape Horn, travelling through the fjords and glaciers um, down to reach Ushuaia, four days from Punta Arenas to Ushuaia, and three days back again. It's an all-inclusive cruise with all of your excursions, meals and open bar. This can be extended with land portions between Ushuaia and back to Punta Arenas to form a week circuit or um, different cruises where you, you take a week cruise going out and back with a slightly different route um, at different times of the year. Okay, so hopefully that's provided a little bit of information. In a moment I'll take some questions. But um, this year or next year we're having a familiar trip to the Galapagos Islands. So thank you for joining us today on the webinar. And by answering the question that I mentioned, um, like the answer to earlier, what's the name of the most popular hiking trek in Patagonia? If you send your answer into Contours Travel at contourstravel.com to put yourself in the draw for a position on that familiar trip. Okay, um, just as a reminder that um, Contours Travel, our website, you can find us on www.contourstravel.com. Any inquiries can be sent through to contours at contourstravel.com or you can phone us on our toll-free number, 1300 135 391. Um, we operate throughout Latin America, being specialists in the area for over 40 years. Okay. Now, if anyone has any questions that you'd like to um, present at this time, and I might be able to assist you with those. Just while I'm waiting for questions, just a reminder that um, reciprocity fees and taxes for Chile coming in $117 when flying in internationally into Santiago, payable by cash or card, that's US dollars, and $100, that is only applies for coming flying internationally into Santiago, land border crossings don't have the fee, um, and Argentina for every entry Multiple, multiple entries valid for three months is 100 US dollars. Okay. Now, does anyone have any questions at this time? No, nothing seems to be coming through. Oh, there we go. So, so. Okay, I have a question in regards to the weather and the best time to travel. Um, at that time, um, it is the best time to travel, but the weather in Patagonia is always unpredictable. So whilst we'd like to have clear blue skies guaranteed every day, not always the case because of the mountains, because of the proximity of the glaciers and the sea. So it can be very windy. Um, an average wind will be 40 to 60 kilometres an hour. Strong breeze will be about 60 to 80, or a windy day will be about 120 kilometres. So the weather patterns can change very quickly. So you have to um, prepare for all types of weather um, at any time when going out hiking or for the day. Okay, if anyone's still there, um, please feel free to join me next week for a little bit of a talk about the Argentinian side of Patagonia, El Chalten and El Calafate followed by the week after, Friday at 11 o'clock, about Antarctica, Ushuaia, the Falkland Islands and Puerto Madryn. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have a nice day.